Okay, KTBFFHCFC. So your question is about how do you pick teams, but I want to, how do you pick teams for scrimmages, but I want to take a step back because I think that you, I think that you think that the best way to, to scrimmage is with two teams, but, but the re, but you, you might want to consider, you might want to consider doing this type of scrimmage like a, a coach that I was trained by, his name is Doug Nevins. He coaches out of West Orange High School and the way he did scrimmages is that he cut the team into three and he made them scrimmage on a small field with the team sitting out surrounding the field with one touch as neutral players. So, so what I noticed was that thinking about, and this is 10 plus years ago, is that it raised it raised the competitiveness and the it raised the competition level and intensity because if you only have two if you only have two teams playing against each other there's nothing gained and nothing lost when if one team if one team wins or if one team gets scored on but if you have three teams competing against each other a king of the hill style when one team gets scored on right that team's got to get off so now you're playing for status and you you're also playing not to lose, right? Because players who, who love to play hate to lose, and they love to play. So, and and I think that if you so so that's one part is that if you shrink the field size down and split the team up into three, it'll elevate this your scrimmages. You'll have more fun. There'll be more goal. goal there'll be more goals scored. There'll be more touches on the ball. There'll be more one v one. There'll be more 1v1 scenarios, there'll be more crosses, there'll be more transitions from offense to defense. So for all those reasons, I think it's a more, it's more effective than playing full field scrimmages when, when you could kind of raise intensity level, competition level by tightening the field and cutting the team up into three. And if you don't have enough, if you don't have a goalkeeper to fill, let's say you only have one goalkeeper, you could do sweeper keepers, or if you have mismatch numbers, you could leave one player Usually, the best player on your whole team, you could have them play. Uh, you could have them put a, a red pinny on, and they play for all, all the teams that come on the field, and they never leave the field. If you have no goals, you can create you can create cone cone gates. So two sets of cone gates on each side of the field. And I just drew up. I drew up a um, right. So if this is half of a field, you want to you want to put your big goal. Assuming you do have big goals, you want to put it very close right almost half of a half and then you extend the 18 yard box to create to and create and use a cone line and so you have a tight field and then now all your players who are sitting out are surrounded on the outside maybe you put depending on your numbers two on this side one on this baseline one on this baseline next to the goal two on this side one and one here or if you've got less numbers than that you could go you know one 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 it, it, you, you, you get the idea. Surround the field with your players with one touch. And what I also notice is that with the players surrounding the field with one touch, the, the higher the quality of their touch, the better their play, the faster they'll get on. Right? They want to help both teams score so that they can get back on. So you're going to find that the players are on the outside, since they have one touch, are very engaged. And if they, if they lose focus, right? if a team plays in the ball and then they forget which team they're on, and they give it to the wrong team, everyone at the practice will start to kind of harp at them because they're not focused and they're not tuned in and this is gonna help them tune in more, right? So it's a really, it really keeps people accountable. Plus, if you give three captains, right, in this style of play, if you give the three quote unquote best players, let's say you just pick out the three best players on your team that you should know, um, you put each of them in, uh, a different color penny or one person got shirts one person's got penny and one person is a uh, different color penny something like that when they start playing for status and to not get knocked off the field sometimes girls can be uh, click clickish clickish right they'll ex intentionally exclude or they'll include their closest friends but sometimes what happens is they'll choose they'll choose competency and dominance over their clickers so you give, you give one person the, the option, you give each captain the, the option to pick their own teams and they're picking the best players. So you, you said in your comments that you usually like to 
choose separate your scrimmage teams based on what people you want to play together, but I think you'll start to reveal uh, the hierarchy within your team based on who are the first picks from said captains. And I think that's a great way to also choose a starting lineup if you don't if you don't have one. Right? You could have if your three captains are picking the best players, it's like okay, three best players on the team, then it's four, five, six, seven, eight, you know, all the way up to, to eleven, and then the best keeper should be pretty apparent as well. But that's not always the case, right? Like I said, uh, 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 girls can be cliquish, and I mean, boys, boys too can be t to a degree. But I think boys just love to have are more more intense, have a higher intensity and competitiveness level. And maybe I'm wrong about that, but um, um, so where are we going? So so the question is. How do you pick the teams? So I just think that's a more, right? So I wanted to take a step back because when you talk about scrimmaging, that's what it's, I'm, I'm, I'm 90, I'm 92 percent sure that the way you're scrimmaging isn't like this, isn't like a small sided scrimmage with a lot of, it, it's, it tightens the field, it makes players, it pl makes players increase the speed of their decision making, it, I, it, it engages more the team. You think about it in your average scrimmage, players touch the ball a couple of times right getting a couple of touches in this style there's just so many more interactions that are game translatable and it's high intensity right it should be done at the end of practice or the whole entire practice right if this is a great way to run a tryout because you get to see you get to see almost real style gameplay you get to see more repetitions of how players play and you could start to say wow this player's got put in six goals and their team hasn't come off, right? You could start to see trends. You could see, well, whenever whenever Cindy is playing on the field, her team never gets kicked off and and she or, she scores all the goals. Or, or when when Susie and Rebecca are together, they're you know, they're dominant in the defense. So, something like that, right? So so it allows you to better evaluate your team because there's so many more um, there's more volume of 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 gameplay interactions because you've tightened the field and now players can't hide players can't hide because the team's cut up into three so now it matters more since the teams are smaller each person has more responsibility so I just think that uh, that you will benefit tremendously from using this style of scrimmage as opposed to large field scrimmages 11 v 11 style some something like that so hopefully this helps reach out with any questions all right thank you